to the Kids for Christ at the Fort Bend Church. I am Miss Stephanie, your teacher for today. There are many things in this world that want our attention. Those things can come in idols when we give them more importance than we give God. Idols are not meant to stand. They divide our hearts from Him. We were made to love God with all of our hearts. God wants us to worship Him alone. He takes it very serious, boys and girls, when we turn our hearts towards other things. Did you know that the Bible tells us in Hebrews 6 that it is impossible for God to lie? The Bible is God's words, so we know it is true and we should follow its wisdom. Solomon was made king after his father. Do you remember his father's name? That's right, his father was named David. Solomon listened closely to his father and requested wisdom from God. But today, we learn that Solomon began listening to other voices that caused him to sin against the Lord. Our big picture question has been teaching us about mercy for the last couple of weeks. Today, we will see the need for mercy as Solomon's sin divides the nation. Who remembers the answer to this question? What is mercy? That's right. Mercy is when God does not give us the punishment that we deserve. Like a good father, like any good father, God must punish sin. But he also showed us great mercy when he sent Jesus to take the punishment for our sins. Only through Jesus we are saved, boys and girls. Today, we will see how Solomon's sin divided a nation. God takes sin very seriously, but he also gives us mercy to those who repent. Remember, just last week we learned how Solomon completed the temple and spent time praying to God, dedicating this temple. Solomon allowed his heart to be led astray from the full devotion. Solomon allowed his heart to be led astray from the full devotion to God. His sin not only affected his life, but the whole nation. Let us see what happens in today's Bible story. Solomon's sin divided the kingdom from 1 Kings 10 and 12. King Solomon was wiser and richer than any other king on earth. He loved God and God blessed him, but Solomon wanted more. He had many wives from different nations, and before long, Solomon's wives were able to turn him away from God. Solomon began to worship the false gods that his wives worshiped. He built altars on a hill near Jerusalem to worship idols. Then, the people in Israel began to worship the false gods too. When this happened, God was angry. God said to Solomon, since you have done this, I will take the kingdom away from you and give it to your servant. You will be king the rest of your life, but when your son becomes king, he will lose everything except for one tribe. And that is exactly what happened. Solomon had a servant named Jeroboam. One day, a prophet named Ahijah met Jeroboam as he was coming down the road. Ahijah took off his coat and tore it into 12 pieces. Ahijah told Jeroboam, take 10 pieces for yourself. God is going to take the kingdom of Israel away from Solomon. He will let Solomon and his family keep a small part, but you will get the bigger part. 
10 tribes. Ahijah said God was going to punish King David's descendants for their unfaithfulness, but their punishment would not last forever. When Solomon died, his son Rehoboam became king. The people did not want to serve a king like Rehoboam because he treated them so harshly, so they made Jeroboam king. The kingdom of Israel was now divided. Jeroboam ruled over the northern kingdom of Israel. Solomon's son only ruled over the southern kingdom of Judah. King Solomon's sin led to the division of the kingdom. God's people needed a better king. Through David's family, God would send his own son, Jesus, to be a perfect king over God's people forever. Jesus is greater than Solomon. Jesus brings his people together and leads them back to God. Solomon allowed his heart to worship false gods and his sin divided the kingdom. God takes sin serious. God takes sin seriously. Sin separates us from God and always has consequences, boys and girls. Solomon's sin suffered a consequence that divided the kingdom. What led to Solomon's heart being turned away from loving only God? 1 Kings 11 and 4 says, not only did Solomon have lots of gold, but he also had many wives. He married women from tribes that the Lord told the Israelites not to marry. Then his wives began to pull him away from God. Solomon's wives worshiped idols and the idolatry influenced Solomon. His heart did not fully love the Lord. Think about the people you surround yourself with, boys and girls. Do they encourage you to worship God or do they pull you in different directions? First Kings chapter 11 verses 11 through 13 tells us that God did divide the kingdom, but because of his promise to David, God would show mercy to Solomon. The Lord would not divide the kingdom during Solomon's reign. However, after Solomon's reign, God would split the kingdom and leave only one tribe to David's family. Our Christ connection tells us that sin is very serious. King Solomon's sin led to the division of the kingdom. God's people needed a better king. Through David's family, God would send his own son, Jesus, to be a perfect king over God's people forever. Jesus is greater than Solomon. Jesus brings his people together and leads them back to God. Our Christ connection tells us that sin is serious. King Solomon's sin led to the division of the kingdom. God's people needed a better king through David's family, God would send his own son, Jesus, to be a perfect king over God's people forever. Jesus is greater than Solomon. Jesus bring his people together and lead them back to God. Later, when you watch the questions from the kids video, think about these questions. How could Solomon's sin lead to the division of the kingdom? if Jesus takes a penalty for our sins. Does trusting in Jesus take away the consequences of sin? How does knowing that sin can have earthly, how does knowing that sin can have earthly consequences change the way we think about sin? Could you repeat that Doesn't trusting in God take away the consequences of sin? For today's mission moment, we will see that Victor and Lumila Mora left their home in Brazil because they have compassion for Brazilians in the United States where we live who do not know Jesus. They moved to Boston, Massachusetts. 
Later in the Missions Moments video, we will learn a little more about why Boston needs missionaries. Six million people live in the city of Boston, and many do not know Jesus or attend church. Some have never heard the truth about Jesus. The people of Boston need Jesus. Our key passage is found in the book of Exodus. Exodus is the second book of the Bible. Now, repeat the key passage after me, boys and girls. The Lord. The Lord is a compassionate and gracious God. Slow to anger and abounding in faithful love and truth. Maintaining faithful love to a thousand generations, forgiving iniquity, rebellion, and sin. Exodus 34, verses 6 through 7. Now let us sing the key passage song, The Lord, Then I Worship Song.
Praise and worship is so much fun. It makes God very happy. Keep singing the key passage song all week to help you remember this key passage today. Let us pray. Lord, we praise you for your compassion and mercy. We, like Solomon, sin against you. Thank you for sending Jesus to take punishment for our sins. Help us to trust in you alone. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. After the questions from the kids video and mission moment video, work on your activity if you have questions. Ask an adult. This week, I want you to pray that the people in Boston will hear the gospel and believe it. Remember to subscribe to the Fort Bend Church YouTube channel. Like and share this week's video. Have a great week, boys and girls. See you next time. Hi there, I'm Pastor Kevin. It's time for questions from kids. Angel from Bowling Green, Kentucky asks, How can Solomon's sin lead to the division of the kingdom if Jesus takes the penalty for our sin? I thought trusting in Jesus took away the consequences of sin. That is an intriguing question. There are often earthly consequences for our sins. As an example, if you're home and you sin against your sibling, older sibling or younger sibling, your parent or guardian or overseer may give you a consequence. Maybe you miss out on a reward. Maybe you miss out on some fun iPad or outside time. There's a consequence. Or maybe you're at school and you sin. And your school teacher or school administrator says, you know what, you broke the rules. The consequence is no recess for you today or no art time for you today. So we often see earthly consequences for the sins that we commit. In this case, in the Old Testament case, Solomon is no different. Solomon uh, was serving in a united kingdom and his sin divided the kingdom. And that's why we need a better king, a better king like King Jesus. More important than the earthly consequences are the eternal consequences, the eternal separation from God if we do not accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. What we need and what God has given us is a right and just and fair king in Jesus Christ. Trusting in Jesus does not remove the earthly consequences of our sins as much as breaking the rules in your home are always going to follow or have some consequence of the rule that you've broken in the home. Trusting in Jesus takes away the eternal consequences, not simply the earthly consequences. Question I have for you is, how does knowing that sin can have earthly consequences change the way you think about sin. The word revolution means a radical change in society. Boston, Massachusetts is known as the birthplace of revolution because many historic events took place there during the Revolutionary War in the late 1700s. The city has slowly been changing churches into townhomes and Christian universities into schools, not based on the Bible or Jesus' teaching. Even though the city itself was founded by people pursuing religious freedom, most people in Boston today have not heard the gospel. But God has a plan for this city. He is creating radical change through local pastors, Christian workers, and missionaries who are telling the people of Boston all about Jesus Christ. They are loving people, starting churches, and baptizing new believers. It can be difficult meeting the needs and sharing the gospel with almost six million people. That's why missionaries need our help. We can give through our church's missions offering to support the current work and send more missionaries to Boston. 
We can also pray for God to continue his revolution of changing hearts and minds to love Jesus in Boston.